Hello, dear friends. Today we will discuss the keys of the multiple choice question of endocrine pharmacology. And the first question is which insulin preparation is used in the management of diabetic ketoacidosis? As you all know, that diabetic ketoacidosis is an emergency condition, and for that we require the insulin which is to be administered by the intravenous route. And you all know that it is only the regular insulin which is administered by the intravenous route. So the answer is regular or soluble insulin. Which of the following is an occasional abrupt onset complication of high dose of steroid therapy? Here you have to understand the question that a patient has been given high dose of corticosteroid therapy which led to this adverse effect which is not always but it is of a sudden onset. So, and the options are osteoporosis, avascular necrosis of head of the femur, Paget's disease and osteomalacia. All these options are related to the orthopedics and osteoporosis is a definite uh, complication but it is obviously a gradual onset. It is not an abrupt sudden onset. Paget's disease and osteomalacia, osteomalacia has nothing to do with the corticosteroid. So the answer is avascular necrosis of head of the femur. It is a sudden onset complication with a high dose of steroid therapy and there is a no treatment for it. You have to just do the replacement of the head of the femur. So the answer is B. Which of the following is a long acting corticosteroid devoid of mineralocorticoid action? And the options are prednisolone, triamcinolone, dexamethasone and hydrocortisone. Out of this, the triamcinolone and dexamethasone, these two are the corticosteroids which are not having mineralocorticoid action. It means that they are purely glucocorticoid. But triamcinolone is an intermediate acting corticosteroid while the dexamethasone is a longer acting agent. So the answer is C, dexamethasone. Now can you just guess that which is the another answer of this uh, question which is not here but it can be beta methazone also. Preferred agent along with route of administration for the treatment of acute adrenal insufficiency. So here you have to select the agent as well as by which route it should be given. Here the agent is hydrocortisone and dexamethasone while the route is IV state, then IV infusion, then IV bolus by infusion and then IM. Now the agents that are preferred is hydrocortisone and dexamethasone but the preferred route is IV bolus because it is an acute crisis. So initial bolus should be given followed by intravenous infusion. So the answer is C. Which of the following is not preferred for the treatment of acromegaly? Acromegaly obviously the growth hormone is excess so we have to give the agent which is having antagonistic action on the growth hormone and somatostatin and their analogs like octreotide and landriotide they are useful for this purpose and pegvisomide it is a growth hormone antagonist obviously it is useful so you may feel that all these are the correct option but here i have used the word not preferred and the answer is somatostatin somatostatin is not preferred because of its additional various other actions which leads to adverse effects and that's why their analogs are uh, preferred and they are, they are developed also. These are octreotide and landriotide. So the, here the answer is somatostatin. Which of this is not a contraindication to hormone replacement therapy in menopausal women? Okay, oh, sorry, postmenopausal women. <coughs> and here the options are unexplained vaginal bleeding, family history of breast carcinoma, uncontrolled hypertension, chronic liver disease and none of the above. If you just look at the carefully all these options, unexplained vaginal bleeding or the history of breast carcinoma or uncontrolled hypertension or liver disease, all these are contraindication and here there is a double negative and hence none of the above is the correct option. Which of the following antituvercular agent when co-administered with combined oral contraceptive pills leads to chances of failure of contraception? It means that oral contraceptive pills they are very effective especially the combined oral contraceptive pills 
their efficacy is more than 99% but when you give it along with a drug which is the microsomal enzyme inducer and which induces the microsomal enzyme which leads to the metabolism of the oral contraceptive pills then there are chances of oral contraceptive failure so here you have to select the microsomal enzyme inducer agent and that is obviously the rifampicin okay and that's why in this case suppose a lady uh, who is already taking the oc pill for the prevention of the contraception and develops tuberculosis what you have to do you have to increase the dose of the oral contraceptive pills so here the answer is b rifampicin here you have to identify the correct statement if you just look at the options all of these are the agents which are acting on the estrogen receptors some of these are agonists some of these are antagonists some of these are agonists at a certain receptor and antagonists at another receptor so somewhat uh, tricky question clomiphene is having only agonistic action on estrogen receptor no clomiphene is a pure antagonistic fluvestrant is a pure estrogen agonist no it is an antagonist Raloxifen is having only antagonistic activity on estrogen receptor. No, raloxifen is also known as a selective estrogen receptor modulator because it is having an agonistic action on certain receptors and antagonistic action on the uh, other receptors. But but correct option is C, the tamoxifen because tamoxifen like the raloxifen, it is having agonistic as well as antagonistic activity on the estrogen receptor depends on the organ on which the estrogen receptors are present. So the answer is C. Match the adverse effect. Here you can see the different uh, drugs which are used for the management of the thyroid. These are radioactive iodine, iodine and carbimazole. And the options are iodinism, agranulocytosis and soreness in the neck. When you give the radioactive iodine, as it is a radioactive material you are giving, uh, so there are chances of focal soreness in the neck. Iodine, obviously it leads to iodinism and carbimazole. Okay, it rarely, otherwise it is a safe drug, but rarely it will lead to the egg granulocytosis. So, these are the correct options. Adverse effect or adverse effects which are seen after long term use of combined oral contraceptive pill is or are. Here, uh, if you just uh, look at very carefully, uh, there are many adverse effects of the oral contraceptive pills, certain are seen. After uh, uh, the initial few days of the administration of OC pills, some are seen after a few times and some adverse effects are seen few years after the stoppage of the OC pills. So, but here we have to find after the long term use. So, nausea and vomiting and headache, they are seen in the initial transient adverse effect, but weight gain it is seen after long term use. So, the correct option is weight gain. Major drawback with the use of the alpha glucosidase inhibitor in the type 2 diabetes is as we have already discussed alpha glucosidase inhibitors by inhibiting this enzyme they prevent the carbohydrate absorption from the GI tract and uh, that's why the problem is this carbohydrate is not absorbed and it leads to GI tract flatulence, discomfort and various other side effects and that's why the patient compliance is very poor but it will not lead to the weight gain or hypoglycemia or insulin resistance. So the option is D, poor patient compliance. Following are the contraindications for the use of the androgens. Androgens, you all have missed this class and the options are carcinoma of the prostate, carcinoma of the male breast, HIV positive individuals and pregnancy. Now androgens are uh, because uh, the carcinoma of the prostate and carcinoma of the male breast okay these are dependent on the androgen and that's why if you give these agents this disease will progress cancer will progress that's why it's contraindicated obviously pregnancy is a contraindication but but hiv patient living with hiv and aids you all must know that plhiv or plha now it is the terminology used for the patients with hiv and aids Many a times in these patients, if there is a worse thing uh, to prevent or to reverse uh, this catabolic action on the muscles, these agents are used. So the option is HIV positive individuals. Sildenafil is contraindicated in. Sildenafil is an agent which leads to the local vasodilatation which is used for the erectile dysfunction. But, but if the person is already having the cardiovascular disease or if the person is already having other coronary dilator drug especially the nitrate then this drug must not be given so 
Uh, here the options patient with the diabetes you can give patient with the pulmonary arterial hypertension yes it is one of the drug for this rare disease patient on nitrate therapy you must not give so the op uh, correct answer is option C which of the following is or are mechanism of action of combined oral contraceptive pills now the oral contraceptive pills as I have already told in the one of the previous question that its efficacy is more than 99% and the reason is it acts as a different level First is it inhibits the mid-cycle uh, ovulatory surge, uh, sorry, LH surge, uh, so inhibition of the ovulation, even if the ovulation occur because of the utero-tubal contraction, uh, uh, this ovum will not reach uh, to the site where it should be, and even if this will occur, a sperm is not able to enter into the uterine cavity because of the cervical mucus becomes thick, so it is hostile to the sperm penetration, and even all these occur. Because of the, its creation of the unfavorable environment in the endometrium, the implantation will not occur. And that's why it's because it's so much high, but here the answer is all of the above. Following are the therapeutic indications of mifepristone, except mifepristone is an anti-progesterone, progesterone antagonist. It is used for the termination of the pregnancy as well as postcoital contraceptive, same mechanism. It is used for the cervical ripening also, but no, it is not used for the endometriosis. Which of the following is not an insulin secret to go? It means the agent which is not secreting the insulin. The glimepiride is sulfonylurea, it is an insulin secret to go. Nateglinide, it is a meglitinide, it is also secret to go. Cetagliptin is a DPP4 inhibitor, it is also insulin secret to go. But Ecarbose, it is an alpha glucosidase inhibitor, so it is not an insulin secret to go. So the answer is C. Which instruction should be given to the patient regarding the intake of the bisphosphonates? Now, bisphosphonates are the agents which must be taken on the empty stomach and to get its optimal action, it must be taken on the empty stomach and there are chances of risk of esophagitis and esophageal ulcer and that's why it must be taken in an upright posture with a full glass of water and that's why the correct answer is C. And which of the following agents have a presence of the receptor in the nucleus? Adrenaline and the growth hormone, they are having their receptors at the cell membrane level. Corticosteroids, they are having their receptor at the cytoplasm. Thyroid hormone, they are having their receptor at the nucleus. So the option is A. So this is all about uh, the, the answers of the MCQs of the uh, endocrine. In the next class, we will meet with some other topic. Thank you very much.